Welcome again to the Sunday Guerrilla Men's Bible Study. I'm Brother Thomas Lee Harris III, and we are continuing in our verse-by-verse -verse study through the book of 1 Samuel. And we're in chapter 2, um, starting at verse 1. And Hannah prayed and said, My heart rejoices in the Lord. My horn is exalted in the Lord. I smiled at my enemies because I rejoice in your salvation. No one is holy like the Lord, for there is none beside you, nor is there any rock like our God. Verse 3. Talk no more so very proudly. Let no arrogance come from your mouth, for the Lord is the God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. The bows of the mighty men are broken, and those who stumbled are girded with strength. Verse 5. Those who were full have hired themselves out of bread, and the hun hungry have ceased to hunger. Even the barren has borne seven, and she who has many has become feeble. feeble. Verse 6. The Lord kills and makes alive. He brings down to the grave and brings up. The Lord makes poor and makes rich. He brings low and lifts up. Verse 8. He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the beggar from the ash heap to set them among princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's and he has set the world upon them. Verse 9. He will guard the feet of his saints, but the wicked shall be silent in darkness, for by strength no man shall prevail. Verse 10, the adversaries of the Lord shall be broken in pieces. From heaven, will thunder, from heaven he will thunder against them. The Lord will judge the ends of the earth. He will give strength to his king and exalt the horn of his anointed. Verse 11, then Elkanah went to his house at Ramah, but the child ministered to the Lord before Eli the priest. Now the sons of Eli were corrupt. They did not know the Lord. And the priest's custom with the people was that when any man offered a sacrifice, the priest's servants would come with a three-pronged hook in his hand while the meat was boiling. Then he would thrust it into the pan or kettle or cauldron or pot. And the priest would take for himself all that the flesh brought, brought up. So they did in Shiloh to all the Israelites who came there. Verse 15. Also before they burned the fat, the priest's servant would come and say to the man who sacrificed, Give meat for roasting to the priests for he for he will not take broiled meat from you but raw verse 16 but if the man said to him they should really burn the fat first then you may take as much as your heart desires he would then answer him no but you must give it now and if not I will take it by force so I want to pause right there what we're seeing is Eli, the high priest, he had three sons, and they were, they were corrupt. It was a custom in those days that people would bring sacrifice to the priest, and he would make an offering to God for them. And it shows even way back then how corruption works its way in. You know, man is evil from birth. And these men would take... They were running scams on people's offerings and saying they had to bring more and this, that, and the other. So I just want to make sure we're on the same page here. So verse 17. Therefore the sin of the young men was very great before the Lord. For men abhorred the offering of the Lord. Verse 18. But Samuel ministered before the Lord, even as a child, wearing a linen epot. I want to pause right there. Linen epoch was a garb of the priests. All right, just imagine that. We're going to hear that a lot. A linen epoch. It covered the vital organs, your heart, your lungs, this area, you know. So it's supposed to be 
the sacrificial gall. Verse 19. Moreover, his mother used to make him a little robe and bring it to him year by year when she came up with her husband to offer the yearly sacrifice. And Eli would bless Elkanah and his wife and say, The Lord give you descendants from this woman from the loan that was given to the Lord. Then they would go to their own home. Verse 21. And the Lord visited Hannah so that she conceived and bore three sons and two daughters. Meanwhile, the child Samuel grew before the Lord. Now Eli was very old, and he heard everything his sons did to all Israel, and how they lay with the women who assembled at the door of the tabernacle of the meeting. Verse 23, So he, did, so he said to them, Why do you do such things? For I hear of your evil dealings from all the people. No, my sons, for it is not a good report that I hear. You make the Lord's people transgress. If one man sins against another, God will judge him. But if a man sins against the Lord, who will intercede for him? Nevertheless, they did not heed the voice of their father because the Lord desired to kill them. Verse 26. And the child Samuel grew in stature and in favor both with the Lord and men. Then a man of God came to Eli and said to him, Thus says the Lord, Did I not clearly reveal myself to the house of your father when they were in Egypt in Pharaoh's house? Verse 28. Did I not choose him out of all the tribes of Israel to be my priest, to offer upon my altar to burn incense and to wear an ephod before me? And did I not give to the house of your father all the offerings of the children of Israel made by fire? Verse 29. Why do you kick at my sacrifice and my offering which I have commanded in my dwelling place? And honor your sons more than me to make yourselves fat with the best of all the offering of Israel, all Israel, my people. Verse 30. Therefore, the Lord God of Israel says, I said indeed that your house and the house of your father would walk before me forever. But now the Lord says, far be it from me. For those who honor me, I will honor. And those who despise me shall be likely esteemed. Verse 31. Behold, the days are coming that I will cut off your arm and the arm of your father's house so, they, so that there will not be an old man in your house. And you will see an enemy in my dwelling place despite all the good which God does for Israel. And there shall not be an old man in your house forever. Verse 33. But any of your men whom I... Do not cut off from my altar, shall consume your eyes and grieve your heart. And all the descendants of your house shall die in the flower of their age. Now this shall be a sign to you that will come upon your two sons, on Hophini and Phineas. In one day they shall die, both of them. Then I will raise up for myself a faithful priest, who shall do according to what is in my heart and in my mind. And I will build him a sure house, and he shall walk before my anointed forever. Verse 36. And it shall come to pass that ever, everyone who is left in your house will come and bow down to him for a piece of silver and a morsel of bread, and say, Please put me in one of the priestly positions, that I may eat a piece of bread. Amen. And that concludes the second chapter of the book of 1 Samuel. And we see that the wrath of God is preparing itself for Eli and his house because of the evil that his sons do. And we also got to look at the young Samuel who as a child, his mother left him there and he was... You could see the anointing of God coming upon him and he was growing in the presence or in the characteristic, in the likeness of God.
Amen? And that concludes the second chapter of 1 Samuel. See you in verse chapter 3.